Guys, shot a walleye video. Well, I thought it was gonna be a walleye video. It ended up being a pike video. This morning, had a hard nap. We're back at it, cleared the memory cards. We're going for an overnight solo mission for some big dragons. I'm talking sturgeon, guys. Let's go see if we can catch some hogs. I got two over 60 this year. That means three years in a row I got two over 60. I've never got three over 60. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I can make that happen. It's a dream, but we're gonna try. And we're gonna try to do it alone, see what happens. So, probably won't be a bunch of crazy B-roll. I'm sure my buddy Terry is coming super early to join me. We were talking earlier. So, uh, don't be surprised if I don't end up solo at like three, four, or five, six in the morning. Because eventually people gotta join me, right? You know, it's not, it's not just a solo thing all the time. But anyways, that's enough talking, guys. I got some driving to do. I got to get in there before it gets dark and get set up. It's about mm, 9 o'clock now, so I'll check in with you guys when I get there. Hopefully, we hook into some fish fast, but you never know. Can't get greedy, right? Guys, I just got crushed. Boom, hooked up. Oh, that's a sturgeon. That's a sturgeon, guys. Oh, yeah. Big jump out there. Big jump out there. Right on. So I got the burbot so far tonight. Now I'm hooked up with a sturgeon. Excuse the muffledness. I, uh, I had the buff up, you know? The bugs are horrible at night. This is feeling like a good fish. There's uh, apparently someone coming towards me, or someone down there. That's strange, I did not notice them. But we are hooked up with a really good fish here. Oh, in the middle of a beautiful Alberta night. Right on. First sturgeon of the night always feels confusing whether it's actually big or not. I'm gonna keep my headlamp off until I know I'm close. That way I'm not messing with the light too bad here. Cast it into a little bit different area. Hooked up within a few minutes. I haven't made like a ton of ground on this fish. Definitely some. But uh, actually it sounds like it's pretty close. Took a nice jump earlier there. I think I can see it. All right. Yeah, that looks like a good tail. Good sized tail on the fish anyways, I think. Hard to completely tell in the dark, right? But, oh yeah. That's a beautiful fish. Wow, actually, that's a really big fish. Okay, okay. That fish uh, surprised me. He was pretty calm there at shore. As soon as I went to grab him, I got a hold of him for a second and he went absolutely berserk. And that's a problem because now I've stirred up the water for myself. And I filled my boots with water. That's okay though, it's all part of it. I got waders on under rubber boots. If you wanna talk about fashion, I got it. <laughs> what a beautiful night, it was awfully windy earlier. It's calmed down now. 
Jeez, guys, this is this is a high 50s. There was someone there, but they're gone now. Or at least their lights off. All right, guys. This is going to be it, I think. We're going to get this fish in. Just a giant of a sturgeon. One just jumped right out in front of me. I can't see anything. God. Oh, that initial burst when you grab them is just insane. I wasn't joking. I was not joking. That's an absolute beast to start the night. Wow. So we just got everything dialed in for the night, guys. Um, it's a little windy. I had... Uh, Forgot the fish whistle at home. Had to go get it. How am I gonna get through at night without being able to blow fish whistles so that the fish come in and know where to go? So, it is what it is. But I just wanna go over some key things uh, that I think everyone should have um, when you're night fishing because if you don't have them, it's gonna make things a lot more difficult. So first thing we're gonna start with, guys, this is just called like a, a newer photo video light led um, got that off amazon i think it was like 45 bucks they run off sony batteries um, but they're great filming lights i've dropped them to the bottom of the lake in the ice season left them overnight and had to go get them in the morning and they still worked um, the battery was pooched but the uh, light itself was still good after it dried out so next thing we're going to get into guys obviously we like to run bells um, so when we're when we're being all social and stuff, we can hear when our rod's going and we're not paying attention. At nighttime, check that out. That's called a finger light. Get those at the dollar store, guys. Super clutch to have on your bell. Um, when you're fishing by yourself, it's not so much a big deal. It's kind of nice to see them little slight taps. But when you're fishing with other guys, you can have all different colors so you can tell whose rod is going when because um, that's obviously going to be important because you don't want to be running around and missing bites because you're you're trying to figure out which rod is which and which, which rod is actually going off. Um, probably one of the most important things, guys, is a good headlamp. Once again, this one's off Amazon. Um, ton of different modes on it. Super, super ridiculously bright to the point my friends all complain about it and say, stop looking at me, you're blinding me. I know they just think I'm ugly, but they try to they try to mask it with saying that it's the headlamp, so that's a super important one as well, guys. Um, obviously, extra layers of clothes. Uh, three, four, five in the morning. Doesn't matter how warm you think it is, it's freezing cold um, by the time you get there. So uh, no matter what your forecast says, bring a couple extra layers. I know that uh, I got down here after the walk, and I was like, wow, I wish I didn't have so many clothes on for the walk. But shortly. I'm gonna be glad that I have them on. Um, so night fishing guys, once again, good lighting. Um, I prefer like the spotlight, the video lights, uh, obviously so I can record for you guys, as well as so just so I can see what's going on, as well as a solid headlamp because a solid headlamp is super important. Um, the bell lights is just a little key. A lot of guys go, what's the bag? What's the flag tape for? I see a lot of guys run and they grab their bell off when they get a bite. That's just wasting time. You should be just setting the hook once you pick up your rod and feel that bite. Set the hook. Don't be messing around with the bell. Flag tape in the bag, guys, is simply so that when the bell launches 10 feet behind me and lands in some bushes, I can easily find it after. I know it seems super basic, but it is so... It saved me from buying bells nonstop all the time, put it that way, um, like I used to. Well guys, I just landed a 57 inch fatty. Uh, hopefully the footage was all right. Um, I kind of walked out of the frame at one point, so I'll probably crop that out. Um, but yeah, had a visitor at one point it looked like, but they're gone now and hopefully I was, I was hoping to say hi to someone, 
But anyways, we are out here. We got the worms out. We got a burbot. I'm getting a bite right now. Let's go. Fucked up, guys. Check that one. Oh, almost fell over. Check that one out, guys. Let's make this number four. Check with that one out quick, guys. Another beautiful fish. Look at his source underneath that fish. So, quick recap. It's two o'clock. I got five sturgeon, one burbot. Missed a few fish. I uh, lost one. Um, but that's bound to happen. Um, wind's kind of on and off, but uh, having a good time. Like I say, one of the main things that you want to do. Uh, if you're going out for your first overnight, there's just gonna find a nice night. The reason I chose to film this one tonight is it's actually like 15 degrees, but it still feels awfully cool, especially with that wind um, when it was 25 today. So it's a big temperature drop. Um, you know, when it drops down to zero, it makes it awfully tough. It's awfully hard to film, but uh, tonight's a little nicer. So we're after them. The fishing's really good, and we'll see what else we can do. Just pulled in tight to another one, guys. Big jump out there. Definitely another 50 plus, guys. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful fish. Kind of slim, but look at that mouth. This governor. Let's get it back. Hooked up again. This one is shaking like crazy. He's got the shakes. Get that bell off there so you guys can stop listening to that. <coughs> Don't mind me. I had to hit the whistle. When I whistle, the fish come. Feeling good, feeling strong. Doesn't want to move with me a whole lot. Just gotta pump it really hard and reel down. Never give that fish slack. Pump and reel down. I see a lot of people go forward with the rod before they start reeling. That is not a good idea. Oh, you know, a lot of people talk about tap out numbers. Fighting these big surgeons, I ain't got that. The line's high in the water which makes me slightly nervous. This fish is close. All right. All right, all right. I can't even see it because I haven't turned on my headlamp for your guys' sake. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Guys, forgive me. It's a freaking tank.
be a really good time for Terry to show up. I have a feeling right now he's in the parking lot. I wonder what time it is. Like I say, it's like, it's like 20 after three, which means Terry's gotta be close to the parking lot. He said, my alarm's set for three, bro. I said, what are you crazy, man? Why are you setting your alarm for three? Why don't you just go there now? He was laughing at me when I told him I forgot some stuff. Coming towards me. He's coming towards me. Whoa. That was wild. He like, I'm not gonna say he jumped at my feet, but he jumped at my feet. He's like, I know you. I don't think it's quite 60. It's high up there. But I don't think we're at quite 60. It's looking like, I'm gonna say 50. Oh, I got a 57 tonight. I'm going 50, 58 and a half. He is a little bigger. Why, why are you getting all hyper all of a sudden? It's a big fish. Oh, it's on the surface out there. We gotta get her in here. Oh, this is a battle. No, I'm good. Thank you, though. I appreciate that. Who is that? Oh, hey, Dave. That's Dave. Usually when I see you, it's a good day. Come on, fish. Turn. Turn. She's trying to go up towards the current again. Oh. Come on, crank the drag, crank the drag. Oh. Guys, if you're not following Dave, check him out on Instagram. River Rambler, Alberta Bandit, Absolute slayer of big pike and walleye and sturgeon. And I got this one. Nice. Nice. That's a beat. Oh, I'm going to fall over. <laughs> I just suck in the mud. I'm clumsy. There we go. Give the rod a chuck. Get in on this hook. Oh yeah, that's the, that's the pen raft. She's indestructible. Ow. The hooks in my hand are what really suck. Woo, that's a beauty. We're gonna just chuck that on. I said 58 and a half, it's gonna be 57 and a half, I bet. Jeez, 57 and a half on the dot. Hey Dave, do you mind getting a quick picture for me? That's a sturgeon, for sure. That feels like good weight. 
Right on. Guys, it's four, what'd you say, 435? 435, Terry is in the building. So we are gonna land into this fish. Hopefully, hopefully, we can't say that we're gonna land it yet. But hopefully we'll land this fish. And that'll be it for the night fishing video, guys. It's starting to get light out. You can't really see it on the GoPro, but uh, starting to be able to see old Jurassic Park here. Oh, we got Dave, we got Terry. This is no longer a solo mission. Man, Dave was literally probably 100 meters down the bank from me. And I didn't notice, he's a stealthy dude, stealthy, river rambler. And uh, now we're hooked up together. And last time we fished together with Terry, I caught a 60 and we doubled up on two color phases of sturgeon. One blue one and one brown one. Let's repeat that, Dave. What do you say, buddy? That was sick, eh? Hey? If I can, I'll find a photo, guys. I'll insert it here over my ugly mug. This is a really good fish. Whoa. He's strong. This is what it's all about. Why you spend the night or why you come super early. I'm not even gonna let Terry get his first cast off first thing in the morning because this fish is over in front of him. And he's going nuts. Terry, don't say things like that when I'm hooked onto a fish for crying out loud. Terry just said that he broke off on a fish yesterday morning while I'm hooked up on a fish. Does he not know about luck? and how bad that could technically be. Oh, I know you do, buddy. I can see the second color of braid on my line, which literally is horrible. Which means I'm gonna have to chase this fish. Uh, I can't chase it because it's straight out for me. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, you're tough. <laughs> Jeez, man. This thing is going nuts. Okay, I got to get back to that uni to uni connection that connects the two lines together, guys. Uh, that makes me nervous. Never got to that one before. I don't know how good that, no I'd like to think I'm good at tying knots, but you know, when you haven't ever seen it before, it's been hidden under the line for a year, it makes you a little nervous. So once I can see blue on my reel again, I'll be happy. Right now I can see green. That's why I do two different colors so that I can get nervous and stuff. I thought about chasing it, but it was straight out. Okay, I just felt the knot come through. It's back on my reel. Exactly, bro, right? I kind of got stupid. Dave reminded me. Right? I kind of got silly there and I was fighting him straight up and down. Dave reminded me, get that side pressure. Slowed that fish down. And now we're making up ground and my arm is tired. Terry's laughing at me. Terry's like, oh, I fish with a 6'6 six, six medium. What are you doing, you wimp? His uh, reel is, I might add, his reel is also taped on because uh, it's just horsing. <laughs> We're making some good ground up on this fish. Like, I wonder if it's like snag because that's weird. Like, he took off forever. He felt heavy when I set into him, but that was a crazy run. 
made a lot of ground back up on them. 10 and two, just pump them and reel. Oh, I'll get my arm to break, but he doesn't want a dog or anything, so I can't do that. <laughs> I did. I woke him right up, Terry. He was awake, but I woke him up even more, buddy. Let's not drop another light in the water. He's not super huge, but he was real thick around the tail when I grabbed him. I'm starting to get bad at... I'm starting to get bad at judging size, too. Bad judge of size, bad judge of character, you know. That's what I'm saying, Terry. That's what I'm getting at. 57 and a quarter, Dave says. Somehow I got the last one right. I don't know what I said. 58 and a half or something? 57 and a half? It was funny because so I was fighting this fish probably a week ago. And I go... I go, guy, they go, home. what's the biggest one you got? I go, 63. He goes, I go, but 60 is like, if you catch a 60, you caught a freak. Like, that's amazing. And he goes, uh, how many of those have you got? I go, four. And I'm calling it right now. This one's a 60. I get it in, throw it on the tape measure. 60 on the nose, dude. They're like, no way. And I was shooting a how to weigh, how to measure video. And I put it in the cradle. I go, how much you guys think it weighs? I go, it weighs 50 pounds. The one kid goes, 45. One kid goes, 55. The other kid says, I don't know. I pick up the scale. I go, it's 52.5. And this cradle weighs 2.5. That's a 50 pound fish, boys. They're like, no way. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Yeah, you're good to go, Terry. I'll keep this girl in here. She's not far. Oh no, you're good, buddy. I'm just gonna switch over to stand on this side so I'm actually in screen. That drag is not loose. Oh. Game on, Terry says. Hopefully he does as good as his Edmonton Oilers did this series and schools us. That was pretty sad, man. I expected a lot more out of them. What is this fish doing again? I touched it so it wants to go nuts. Oh, I, I should be okay. He is straight out for me, so... But it is strong, man. Holy moly. It's trying to still go. Like, look at my rod. It's just bent, man. Right there, guys. Nobody cares. Fish harder. Not even Dave cares. Dave, you don't care. Well, I have no invested interest in <laughs> Come on, fish. Hold on to the spool, right? Like, that's holding the spool, dude. Just in case you guys think that I'm being a win. <laughs> All right, let's go. Come on back. My turn. Just cranking on it and it doesn't want to do this. These fish are hyped, post spawn, full of food, full of sucker eggs. They got that sucker power. Call it sucker horsepower. Or no, just sucker power, because they're not well they're silver red horse. Sucker horsepower. 
<laughs> Why am I so weird? Wow, man. This is impressive. All right. Now it's going to give me a turn. It almost took me back to that knot, man. Just cranking on it. That's why we use heavy line, heavy rods, other than Terry. But Terry handles them. He gets the old man pass. Ten minutes. That's a good battle, man. I think it was 4:35. Terry said. Ten-minute battle. That's epic. My arm is tired. <laughs> it's definitely not a 38 because I had my hands on it. If I if it turns out to get lost, I'll laugh. All of a sudden, the hook just lets loose because all those runs, man, it works that hole in its mouth. I don't like that. I'm going to crack that drag a little more. Turn it. No, it's coming across in front of you. I'm not sure, man. It's right here. It's a big fish, is it not? Like, it looked big when I first seen it. It looks big now. If you want, just open your belt. Get back. It's all good. Don't get your legs wet, because that would suck. I'll scoot it forward. Nice, bro. There's that one. I'm not sure. Yeah, hey. Dude, I've caught this fish. That 